things. First of all, um, for those of you who know me, I'm a, a techie at heart, so this is not an issue of getting access to technology for people. Um, I'm a certified Microsoft Small Business Specialist. I worked on Space Station designing the cabling system for the airlock module, where I was responsible for EMI, EMC analysis, which is electromagnetic interference, electromagnetic compatibility. This is not a foreign subject to me, um, but I do want to address some of the concerns that I've heard in some of the testimony today and some of the questioning, because um, there seems to be a couple false Easter eggs being put out there right now. I want to make sure we dispel that right off the gate. Number one. A lot of people apparently have been told that this is something that's going to help out with rural bra broadband. And I think one of the testimony, and to Senator Hewn's credit, he identified that this is not going to help with rural bro broadband deployment at all. And, and believe me, as somebody who's been traveling all across the state, I realize the issue with getting a good sell and keeping a conversation going. I understand that it's something that's got to get addressed, but this bill is not addressing that at all. Second thing that I want to point out, and it was a carefully worded statement in the legislation, that deals with people that are concerned about denial permit requests, right? So it's always pushed back to the definition of an acceptable limit, uh, level of, um, of radiation. And that's what this is, by the way. This is about radiation. This is not, and, uh, and people need to understand that. Um, I, what they will do on that denial of permit request, they'll point back to an FCC acceptable threshold for radiation levels. Everybody in this room needs to understand the FCC is staffed by former members of the telecommunications industry. They are effectively indemnified against adverse health impact lawsuits when the uh, acceptable limits are higher than the limits actually shown to, to show harmful health effects. And I just want to dwell a little bit on some of those healthful, uh, um, harmful health effects, if I could. Uh, number one, uh, we need to understand that uh, we're all concerned about environmental impacts around PFAS and around lead in the, in the water, all that kind of stuff. The health impacts associated with wireless radiation, when you actually read the laundry list of adverse health impacts, are much more significant than even PFAS and what you see with, the, um, with lead in, in the water system. We're talking about carcinogenic effects due to tumors. We're talking about um, issues with DNA replication, which can lead to adverse uh, issues and regard that part of the mechanism for leading to the carcinogenic effects, but also dealing with things, there's been ties to autism and other impacts as well on it, that I just encourage people to take a look at. This is, um, and that's why everybody's groaning, because a lot of, when we were talking about three-year-olds dealing with this, because the studies have also shown that the people most susceptible to these adverse health impacts are the youngest among us because their blood-brain barrier has not been fully developed. That's why people are concerned about that. I know there's a convenience issue. I'm addicted to this stuff myself, right? This is an issue where I love the convenience of having wireless access. But I also know that in Article 4, Section 51 of our Michigan Constitution, our primary concern is supposed to be the health of our citizens. Amen. That is supposed to be the primary concern. And, uh, and I... Folks, uh, we've done our best to respect your right to be heard. I'm going to ask you to respond in kind and be respectful of this process and not express yourselves one way or the other in that way. So thank you very much for the rest of the day. hope I don't have to ask again. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And I, I just want to make sure people understand that constitutional duty. Now, this is not, I, all of us know in our hearts, we would not knowingly move our family, move our home next to a cell tower, right? We know it implicitly that there's something just not right there. The fact is that there have been studies talking about cell phone usage. And this is a $20 million study by, um, by the federal government because they wanted to make sure absolutely beyond a reasonable doubt that they knew exactly what was happening with cell phone uh, technology and cell phone usage. They found and they determined conclusively that there were carcinogenic effects. Um, now, now we're talking about what's going on with the 5G system. Just want to make sure everybody understands. The issue with 5G wireless deployment um, is not the convenience, because we all like the convenience. It's not the uh, ease of deployment, because it's a lot easier just to pop something up on a tree than it is to actually bury it under the ground and route it to somebody's house in a hardware configuration. The issue is that 5G deployment, because it operates in a higher frequency band of 24 to 90 gigahertz, has to use a higher power density level to get through walls and get through solid objects. And that means you're going to have to put these things every 2 to 10 homes. So you're going to have a cell tower every 2 to 10 homes. 
Nobody would move next to a cell tower, mm -hmm. right? So this is something that is a serious concern. And once again, remember that denial of request or denial permit request that you can put in? It's going to point back to the acceptable levels as determined by the FCC. Not the EPA, or not the CDC, the ones who usually take care of health concerns, but by the FCC, which is staffed by former F, um, members of the telecommunication industry. That's the fox guarding the hen house. That was a, as a result of the 1996 Telecom Act. So I, I want to make sure everybody understands that. Sure, there are provisions in this bill that point to the idea of going off and measuring against acceptable health limits, but that's going to point back to the abnormally high FCC thresholds. And I want to, there's a chart in here, and I'm really upset that I don't have my diagram in here because it would make it very clear, and I'll make sure that everybody on this committee gets access to this chart. We talk about the acceptable limits associated with um, uh, radiation thresholds um, in this bandwidth, and the uh, United States is orders of magnitude above what you see in many of the other civilized Western countries like uh, uh, Switzerland or France or even India and, uh, and um, Israel as well. And so these acceptable limits are way out of whack with what you see in these other countries. Matter of fact, they've outlawed uh, Wi-Fi access in schools and classrooms inside of Israel, out in um, France, and actually in California in some areas they've done this as well. And I, I want to make sure people are, uh, understand what these risks really are. This is, um, this is not conjecture. The, the cell tower uh, impact, so we talked about the cell, cell phone usage. That was done with the, in the United States, the federal government, with an NTP study. At, for cell towers themselves, they did a similar study, very thorough as well, out in Italy regarding cell phone, t cell phone tower usage. They found the exact same results that they found with the cell phone usage. Um, and so the issue is now with the Senate Bill 637 before us is whether or not we're going to usurp local control and the ability to go off and provide safe zones for people that are electrosensitive. And frankly, those are just the people that are sensitive, right? So there's a lot of other harmful effects that we may not sense until it's too late on a lot of these issues. And frankly, a kid's not going to be able to articulate what's wrong with them or the fact that they're seeing ringing in their ears with tinnitus or something like that. The issue is we've got, as legislators, and I'm not saying do away with all technology, but there are ways of going off and getting the Internet of Things. You hardwire this stuff, and there are no issues. Actually, the performance is even better. Um, the, uh, so as we go forward, I just want to make sure that we provide at, at the onset right now, as all this stuff comes through and we're starting to learn more and more about the harmful effects of this radiation, we need to make sure that we protect the fundamental right for people to have to be safe like uh, we're talking about in article 4 section 51 and that means that this bill right now which essentially usurps that authority and allows uh, utilities to place these devices in any public right of way that's out there which could be as you know close as 20 50 feet from somebody's home um, we need to make sure that we protect the ability of some people to petition against that and local municipalities saying no not in our area we're going to be a um, Wi-Fi radiation free zone, if you will, um, to protect the citizens in that area. Um, as we go forward, we want to make sure that everybody gets communicated on what are these adverse health impacts and we can do even more studies specific to the uh, frequencies that are found in the 5G uh, range here. Um, but I, I want to make sure we understand that the fact is the science has been settled on this. There are carcinogenic effects associated with cell phone towers and with cell phone usage. Um, matter of fact, if you actually read the fine print on every cell phone that you actually get, they actually talk about this. How many people here actually read that? That's the uh, same thing with the fine print on this bill. I encourage everybody to oppose this legislation um, and, uh, and just really try to honor our Article 4, 5, uh, Section 51 responsibilities as representatives of the people. Thank you. For your Thank time. you, Senator. Any questions?